unwanted, marginalized, defiant. The Roma people have become the target of governments across Europe. In France and Italy, they've been thrown out in their thousands, accused of illegally overstaying their welcome and blamed for increases in crime. Ces populations? These populations come here legally but stay beyond the legal limit. They live where they are not allowed to live and we want them to leave. They say that in their countries of origin, they're victims of discrimination, a minority with few opportunities. We had no work, no money in Romania. We could barely live. That's why we came here. They're now taking advantage of European Union laws that allow freedom of travel to all European citizens, looking west to find a better life, yet reluctant to adapt to Western ways. The Roma issue has now been forced on EU policymakers. They have to find a balance between the growing hostility and the rights of the Roma. The city of light, the city of love, Paris. The very name conjures up romance, style, and sophistication. Each year, more than 20 million tourists descend on the French capital, home to one of the most ethnically diverse populations in Europe. But more than ever, there is growing antagonism towards foreigners who are coming to settle here, a xenophobia that has many in France convinced their national identity is being diluted. And it starts at the very top. Nous subissons We've suffered from loose immigration policy for the past 50 years, insuffisamment régulé, insufficiently regulated, un échec, which has led to the failure of integration. The Roma have been migrating into France and across Western Europe for decades, though they have always struggled to find acceptance. These days, most of them come from Romania and Bulgaria. Since those countries joined the European Union in 2007, all their citizens have the right to travel throughout most of the continent, and they have flocked to the West. Calderas Aurelia and her extended family came to France two years ago. Unemployed and impoverished, they left Romania looking for a better life. 27 of them are now illegally squatting in this small house in the Paris working-class suburb of Aubervilliers. They live off about 100 euros a month. Even though there's no running water or electricity, Caldera says they live better here than in Romania. When communism collapsed in Romania, there was no more work, nothing for us to do. We could barely survive. In France, there is a way of surviving. We have a place to sleep, enough to eat. But it's a perilous existence. Nearby houses have already been destroyed. Theirs is likely to be next. If we lose the house, we will live on the street. We've lived on the street before, we'll manage. For Calderas, destitution is preferable to deportation. But if we get evicted and sent back to Romania, I will kill myself. I have no life there, no home and no hope. There's no doubting the sense of desperation amongst the Roma community here. They're desperate just to be settled and to live their lives in France, and they're desperate not to be sent back home. Their problem is that they're facing a government which insists on deporting them, and a government which reflects what some people feel is a growing sense of intolerance amongst some people in France towards foreigners who want to settle here. There are an estimated 400,000 Roma in France. Most have been here for generations, but it's the way of life of the thousands who have arrived in recent years that is testing French patience and exposing French intolerance. Most live in illegal camps, 
vacant lots that have essentially been taken over and settled with tents, trailers and shacks. They spring up quickly, often overnight. A situation Jacques Salvatore has had to confront as mayor of Aubervilliers. La découverte un beau matin de l'implantation d'un véritable bidonville en cœur de quartier. We suddenly had a shanty town right in the heart of the neighborhood. It was a real shanty town of about two to three hundred families who came from all directions and descended in the middle of a residential neighborhood. We, of course, ask ourselves what we have to do. We consider forcing them off the land, but this is close to a thousand people. Can you imagine how many police officers would be needed to evacuate a thousand people? So it continued. We then had to help the families on issues of hygiene, portable toilets, medical assistance for the children and elderly. What started as a major inconvenience developed into a deadly confrontation on the evening of July the 16th, 2010. Luigi Ducanet, a 22-year-old Roma, was shot and killed by a gendarme after he repeatedly refused to obey police orders to pull over his vehicle. Violent Roma riots followed. Trees were torn down and the police station was torched. The French government decided to take things in hand, using the Roma as scapegoats for all of France's security and immigration problems. President Sarkozy hoped he would reverse his slumping popularity by aiming a direct hit at a group already disliked in France. His government announced that the camps were to be destroyed, the Roma thrown out. It has been decided that in three months' time, half of the illegal camps, or squats, will be dismantled. That means about 300 of them. In fact, the deportation policy has been in place for years, but it had never been stated so boldly and so publicly. I think it's mostly for Sarkozy a kind of political ploy. You know. he, he's very low in the poll, he's very unpopular. And I think he's trying to get some part of the electorate, the more extreme part of the electorate, the extreme right. We have a very strong um, uh, extreme right in front of the Front National, National Front, which is about 15, 20 percent of the, of the French. And Sarkozy hope, with targeting the Romans, to get um, their votes. As poor relations in the EU, Romanians and Bulgarians have a three-month limit in which they can stay in other European countries, but many outstay their welcome. Certains sont installés sur notre territoire. Some have settled on our territory for too long and under illegal conditions, since they are occupying either private or public property which has never been put at their disposal. And these are not properties that are equipped to receive them. It is in this context that the French government has asked the French judicial system to deal with every case. And, of course, in keeping with the verdicts of the courts, we take these people back to the borders of their country of origin, meaning Romania or Bulgaria. Thousands were put on buses, trains and planes. The evacuated camps destroyed. It's racism. Racism against the Roma from those who said bad things about us. We're not just beggars and thieves. International criticism of Nicolas Sarkozy was swift and unforgiving. Other European leaders expressed outrage at the French policy. The Pope stated his disapproval, but the strongest condemnation came from the European Union. This is a situation I had thought Europe would not have to witness again after the Second World War. I don't think himself is a racist or is a anti-Roma. He's from uh, his wife, Carla Bruni, he's, from, he's Italian, he's half Jewish, he's from Hungary. He, he, I don't think he's a bad man, a racist man. But he wanted to play, you know, the, the, the worst feelings that you can find in every population, including, unfortunately, the French. This Roma camp has been set up along Paris's ring road for more than two years. Here too, fear of being thrown out dominates daily life. But this camp has a unique approach in dealing with Sarkozy's eviction policy. They pray, asking the Lord to make the French president change his mind and to make him a better person. 
This evangelical church has become the spiritual center for the entire Roma community in Paris. That's what we do here. We pray. We don't think Sarkozy is bad. We just pray that God will show him the errors of his ways and that he will see that the Roma are good people. The French president may well have seen exactly that. His policy condemned internationally, his approval ratings remaining low, his government on the defensive and the Roma issue on the front pages. Saint-Denis is an industrial Parisian suburb interspersed with residential areas. This neighborhood was also home to one of France's oldest illegal Roma camps until city officials tore it down in August 2010. Local authorities had to find new parcels of land to relocate the dozens of families who had been here for more than a decade. Too long for the government to throw them out of the country. These small barracks were handmade with whatever scrap building materials they could find, along with some supplies provided by the municipality. The conditions are harsh, living space cramped, uh -huh. and the imposition of strict and sometimes arbitrary regulations by the local authority difficult to stomach. On this day, the mayor's office sent two officials to scrutinize the situation. Parce que si la liste, là, il y a des gens qui ne sont pas contents, ça veut dire que entre vous, liste bah, la, vous n'êtes pas arrivé à vous mettre d'accord pour une raison ou une autre. Nous, on ne peut pas régler ça. La, la seule chose dont on est sûr, c'est que la semaine dernière, il y a eu une réunion. On s'est tous mis d'accord. On s'est tous mis d'accord sur le fait qu'il ne faut pas qu'il y ait plus de 128 personnes sur les parcelles. Si tout le monde ne fait pas d'effort. Ce sera fini, on n'y arrivera pas. Il faut que les gens comprennent quelque chose. La police nationale, elle peut intervenir ici quand elle veut. Et nous, on ne pourra rien faire. Ce sera toutes les personnes sur les parcelles qui vont être les premières victimes. Ça va recommencer. Au lieu d'être un nombre ici et trouver une solution pour plus tard, les gens, tout le monde va se retrouver à tourner. On, on ne peut pas répéter à chaque fois les mêmes choses. The Roma try to have their issues addressed, but the answer remains the same. J'ai parlé avec l'assistante euh, sociale. Elle a dit, je ne sais pas ce qu'elle a dit, l'assistante sociale. Il y en a des douze enfants avec la colle. Je ne sais pas ce que tu fais. Et les dames, il n'est pas ici avec la... la, la comment ça s'appelle avec la... La liste, qu'est-ce que tu fais avec son enfant Parce que, deux minutes s'il te plaît, les dames restent avec nous dix ans avec la Hanou, maintenant il n'est pas la liste. Oui, non, mais ça c'est pas notre faute. Qui a fait la liste Qui a fait la liste C'est pas nous qui l'avons fait. Si la liste n'est pas respectée avec le nombre de gens sur nous, ça respecte la liste. Ça va se terminer pour tout le monde. Ça termine pour tous. Pour tout le monde. Les gens qui sont en plus, plus doivent trouver une solution voilà, pour après se retrouver avec une solution pour tout le monde. Mais sinon, ça va être la fin pour tout le monde. Le voisin ici qu'on en a payé. And with thousands of Roma having already been deported, this is no idle threat. City officials blame Nicolas Sarkozy's government for the problems they now have to address. It's not possible to leave 
It's not possible to let people live in these conditions. It's a disgrace to them and to the neighborhood. We must absolutely cooperate in dealing with this, and it's not possible just to leave it to the local official to deal with. And that's exactly what they're doing today. Deal with it yourselves or send them to other cities, and we can see this is not the solution. Even if they're sent back to their homelands, they'll just come back. It doesn't solve anything, and in fact, it just makes things worse. And yet, while recent French expulsions have dominated the media spotlight, such discrimination is by no means exclusive to France. Although international attention has been focused on the government of Nicolas Sarkozy in France, the targeting of Roma communities as government policy actually began here in Italy, and it's continued consistently for several years, but with none of the international scrutiny that France has attracted. We're saturated with them, and unfortunately, we have serious internal problems. We can't cope. We're not prepared to deal with these people who are coming. They need to be controlled. There is no other way of dealing with them. A daily ritual in the outskirts of Rome. Heavy machinery ripping apart one of the over 200 illegal camps that dot the Italian capital. The government is intent on destroying one camp a day until there are none left, and the residents forced out of the country. More than 100 Roma used to live on this small plot of land right by one of Rome's busiest highways. This is all the bulldozers left behind of Mariana Gusa's home. In Italy, they don't like us. And I don't like it here. They call us gypsies. They say that we are all thieves. Every one of us, thieves. She and her husband will live at a friend's nearby barrack for now. But it seems the Italian government's plan has had the desired effect on Mariana. We will stay here as long as we can, and when I have money, I will go back to my country. What else can I do? My husband, I don't know. I have a child in Romania, but I am here, and the house is now gone. When I have money, I send it home. At this anti-Roma protest in the Italian capital, they actually thanked Nicolas Sarkozy for bringing the Roma issue to the world's attention. Gypsies are annoying. They're bothersome. Nobody likes living near them, and I'm like everybody else. I'm Romanian. I know them well. They don't want to work or do anything besides beg or such things. They will do anything to make money, but not through honest means. Italy started deporting the Roma under a controversial law aimed at tackling crime. As in France, it was violence that led to the anti-Roma backlash. Here, it was prompted by the 2007 murder of a woman in Rome. Nicolai Romulus Mailat, an illegal Roma migrant, was convicted of the murder, the whole community, was also made to pay the price. We are carrying out this operation because illegal settlements favor violent acts and concentrations of people with bad intentions. That guy made a mess for all of us. I don't know why. I don't know what is going to happen to us. Italian authorities even allowed vigilante groups to patrol their neighborhoods. As long as they were unarmed. Still, they were able to scare many into leaving their camps. We are good people and we are here to work, not to commit crimes or anything like that. We are sorry about what happened. Now we have to leave because of a man who committed the crime. Despite overwhelming Italian hostility towards the Roma, the government has still provided some assistance for a relatively small percentage of the 150,000 Romas in the country. 
prefabricated houses in a manufactured community. It has all the basic modern amenities for up to 500 people, running water, electricity, sanitation. It's supposed to help those who lived in the camps better integrate into Italian life. Many of these residents miss their former lives. I lived in the Casellina camp for 40 years. I gave birth to my 10 children there. My 10 children got married there. Even my grandchildren got married there. A frustration for the residents of these villages is the amount of control Italian authorities have over their lives. There are searchlights, high barred fences, and security cameras. They're even referred to as concentration camps. There is surveillance everywhere, watching us, cameras all over. And at the entrance, there's police taking people's ID and keeping an eye on our comings and goings. Then there's the police driving around. Where are we? We're locked up. And tension within the Roma community itself often leads to violence. There are too many mixed nationalities, and with so many people, it's hard to understand one another. It's hard to explain to someone who doesn't live here. If you go out, even minding your own business, you walk a little and you're guaranteed to get into a fight. A community turned on itself while simultaneously living in fear of attacks from outsiders. But illegal camps have their own risks. Many living here suffer from serious health problems. We help people inside the camps, first by taking humanitarian aid directly to them. We bring pediatricians to visit the children because there are cases of tuberculosis, severe diseases for children because there's no water, no electricity, and lots of rats and mice. There are a lot of diseases that no longer exist in the cities, but they thrive here because there are no sanitary controls. Sanitation and hygiene being luxuries few can afford. Many believe that greater integration into Europe for the Roma is the only solution an approach no country has dared try, except for one. A Spanish icon, the fast, complex guitar picking. the lament, drama, and passion of the dance. <laughs> Flamenco is seen around the world as the quintessential expression of Spanish culture. But Spain's contribution to this art form may be overstated. The roots and spirit of flamenco are actually Roma, Gitano, as they say here in Spain. The flamenco culture is so rooted, so entrenched, so profound. It has very strong elements of charisma, of passion that applies to the singing, the dancing, and the guitar. It's got such a strength of passion that it makes people vibrate. Anyone who watches a flamenco performance, they feel it resonate. And also, it's such a pure Gitano tradition, cultural tradition. It also helps to project the feelings and the emotions of the artist. Mariquila is one of the world's most famous flamenco dancers. She has performed for kings, queens, presidents, and for those who simply love dance. She has even been awarded the only doctorate of flamenco in the world by the University of Granada. Today, she runs a dancing school where she keeps a critical eye on her daughter, Tatiana, as she tries to follow in her mother's footsteps as one of flamenco's biggest stars. 
The Gitano aspect of the art probably originates from the fact that when the nomad Gitanos arrived in Granada in the 6th century, it was in this particular area. They were already carrying those elements. When they came here, it was such a fusion. Flamenco is all about fusion. I think there was a predisposition from the Gitanos to actually absorb that existing art. Granada, a beautiful and ancient city in the Spanish province of Andalusia. For over 15 centuries, it has been fought for and controlled by different civilizations and home to the most famous legacy of the Moors' 800-year reign, the Alhambra. The massive walls and minarets remind us of when Islam was the dominant religion here. The Gitanos also migrated in numbers to this region a long time ago. Some trace their arrival as far back as the 7th century. Over that time, their culture has been assimilated into Spanish society, while their identity has never been forgotten, though few are clear on their origins. The ancient Roma were a nomadic people who, some believe, migrated to Europe from northern India during medieval times. They were almost immediately put into forced labor, an enslavement that lasted 600 years. Their first mass migration west started at the turn of the 18th century. The Roma were persecuted throughout the continent. In Nazi Germany, they were put along with Jews and sent to death camps. They now form Spain's largest minority, estimated at one million people by far the largest concentration of Roma in Western Europe. The bond between the Roma in Spain, known as the Gitanos, and the Spanish people has developed over centuries, and it's meant that the Roma here are far better integrated into society than the Roma in other Western European countries. But it's a much tougher situation for newly arrived Roma. Despite the fact that the Spanish constitution recognizes the Roma, we still need to do more. There are issues with housing and education. As in other parts of Europe, illegal camps and shanty towns are still home to many Roma in and around Spain's largest cities. The Santa Lina camp on the outskirts of Madrid has been here for more than two decades. Most of those who live here make just enough to get by from collecting and selling scrap metal. A very common occupation for the Roma throughout the continent, but not enough to afford normal housing. Consuelo Munoz has lived here for 16 years. She is desperate to get government housing for her and her family. Sí. We live amongst lizards, rats, humidity. The rats fall from the ceilings, from the kitchen. The rats are big. This is really living in misery. They are fixing things in the third world, but here in Madrid, we live with rats and misery. They need to relocate us. Some Roma have, in fact, been relocated. As part of an integration policy, apartments are provided for families in the city. Fernando Vargas and Maria Pardo Pardo Hola. moved into this two-bedroom apartment three months ago after living in the Santa Lina camp for years. They now have to pay utility bills and part of the rent. A strain on Fernando's part-time electrician wages, but leaving the camp has changed their lives. We were afraid to have a baby at the camp. You're afraid to lie down. There are rats and it's dirty. There's no running water and no electricity. It's so much better having the baby here. We have heating, water, electricity. I can't imagine having the baby there. Education is also high on Spain's integration agenda. Roma adults who learn to read and write are given a monthly stipend, a few euros, and improved employment prospects. It shows commitment from the authorities, and it shows that we all really want to learn. And it also shows when we are given the opportunities, we take them. The kids should be given education. They need to give them education. 
It really makes me sad and sorry when I see those kids. It breaks my heart. Clearly, Spain is not a paradise for gypsies, but we are much better off than in other countries. What we have here is a direction, a path which has been established, but there are many stages to be completed on that path. But despite Spain's good intentions, many Roma resist integration. And it is all too often the children of the Roma who have been made to pay the highest price for a way of life that they didn't choose. Madrid police officer Javier Payar has to deal with an epidemic of juvenile crime, almost exclusively perpetrated by Roma kids. The main problem is that of policing children. That's by far the main issue. They aren't involved in major offences. It's usually all petty theft, such as pickpocketing or taking money from people at ATMs or robbing small shops. And you can't arrest them, since they tend to be from 9 to 13 years old. And, according to the police, the kids are often forced by their very own parents to beg or steal to provide for the family. It's extremely difficult to gather accurate information. They don't want to talk, but there are some of the younger children who, with delicate coaching, can eventually reveal details. Normally you see them alone late at night, just nine or ten years old, and they're not allowed to go home because they haven't earned enough money that day. They're usually organized into impenetrable family clans, which make it even harder to get information, as the children are scared of the adults and the adults all cover for one another. Some of these networks actually go right back to Romania and Bulgaria, so it's hard for us to deal with. While criminality within the Roma community is of concern to the Spanish government, the main issue for them is Roma poverty. We tend to focus on the problems, on the negatives, but achievements are very important. Public perceptions by which some antisocial behaviors are associated with a certain culture are totally unfair. In fact, these are just different manifestations of poverty. We need to look at the false perceptions people have of the Roma and that they are incapable of working in regular jobs. We've seen that 50% of the Roma workforce is employed in regular salary jobs. Another one is regarding schooling. Over the past 20 to 30 years, we've seen things change so that now almost 100% of Roma children between the ages of 3 to 5 are in school. And those under 16, it's almost at 90%. Spanish authorities boast that these are by far the highest rates of Roma integration in the EU. That's what our public policy is all about. You must also add the cultural elements to that equation. In the case of the Roma, we need to understand that they're an integral part of European history and culture. You can't understand classical music, for example, without the Roma contribution. And in Spain, the association between the two cultures is more profound than in the rest of Europe. Cultural bonds may help with integration, but the rest of Europe is also trying to come to terms with a growing intolerance towards this group of migrants. The EU has now been forced to take a closer look at the desperate poverty that is pushing the Roma to leave their homes. Bucharest is a city in transition, the capital of a country caught in a sort of limbo between past and present, between a communist dictatorship and a struggling democracy. Everywhere, there are reminders of the political machinery that controlled life here for more than six decades. But free market forces are beginning to take root. Romania joined the EU in 2007, along with Bulgaria, the two poorest members of the Union, both struggling to meet any of the economic and political demands required for EU membership. But European eagerness for expansion meant compromise on principle. Among those, Romania's responsibility towards its ethnic minorities. And in Romania, that means the Roma. 
Estimated at just under 3 million out of a population of 22 million, they are by far the largest minority. They have the highest rate of unemployment, the lowest rates of literacy, and the shortest life expectancy. Yet, the Romanian government insists they are doing what they can to help the Roma. Three generations ago, they didn't have a written uh, culture. Um, that uh, makes uh, somehow uh, uh, the programs for education and mainly the implementation of these programs to be very difficult. You have also to take into account that one generation ago, this population um, in a large percentage, they didn't have a house, they didn't have ideas that made the uh, politics for housing and also the employment policies for these people uh, very difficult to be put it in practice. I do consider that the situation improved from uh, what it was 20 years ago, for example, and uh, what it is now. Of course, it's still a lot to be done. But many Roma argue their hardship is a result of Romania's prejudice. Crescentina and Rusen Frusina live in Barbulesht, on the outskirts of the capital, a predominantly Roma community. Neither of them has had a job for almost 15 years, something they describe as typical of all the people in the area. The whole country has been sold, including all the factories. Our country was doing better under the communists, as were the Roma. Even if you do find some work now, you can barely earn enough for bread and a few cigarettes. In these small, dilapidated houses, they take care of their 10 grandchildren. There's no electricity. They don't even have fuel to light the stove, hoping to heat the water by burning a piece of cloth. We can't make coffee. Is this how you make coffee? We only have coffee in the morning. We can only afford it once a day. The parents of the children have all gone to France, hoping that they will be able to provide for the family from there. It's better for them there because they go begging and earn some money. Here, there's nothing to do. What do you want? Kill people to get their money? No. There they beg, they work, they wash cars, and they earn money to send home for the kids. Sometimes they even send money twice in a month for the children's medical treatment, for their well-being. But they're living in a car park, so life isn't really much better there. Our sons live all together in a small shack. They have no place for their children, so I took the responsibility to look after the kids. This way they hope to build a house, a future that will allow for better living conditions. But it's all in vain. They live in the same misery as us. Yet, despite the dire living conditions, Sami Frusina's aspirations are similar to any other 10-year-old. I wanted to become a doctor. Maybe then I will earn good money and help my family. But the children are not encouraged to pursue an education. Even doctor's wages are low in Romania. There is more money to be earned by other means. My brother said I need to help him sell products at the market in another city. So I will help him instead of going to school today. Yet not all the Roma in Romania are poor. In fact, some of them are among the wealthiest and quite keen to show it off. There are entire towns where the wealthy Roma try to outdo one another with ostentatious houses. The bigger and more elaborate, the better. The money is often amassed through illicit means. According to the police, the most common serious Roma crime is human trafficking and then controlling networks of Roma beggars and thieves around the world. After months of planning, 500 Romanian and Europol police, along with 26 British officers, stormed into Roma homes in the small town of Tandrai in April 2010. 27 leaders of an alleged crime ring were arrested, accused of trafficking hundreds of children into the United Kingdom, who were then forced to beg and steal. 
Police suggest this is just the first of such sting operations on human trafficking rings. Nenel Potirka heads a Bucharest-based organization that promotes Roma business interests in Romania. Hello, bună dimineața. He had an unsuccessful bid for the Romanian presidency in the 2009 elections and now sees himself as a protector of Roma culture and people. Deci diferența și comportamentul lor este diferit. Their behavior is different because of one aspect. They are not accepted. If you come across a barking dog, you'll either hit the dog or you'll try to protect yourself. If you hit the dog, the dog will become more aggressive. But if the dog senses kindness, the dog will not forget you. You will be your friend. That is how the Romas are. Like many Roma, his main source of income comes from scrap metal. made a very good living by winning large government contracts. But his finances are of great concern to Romanian authorities. He has repeatedly been arrested on charges of tax evasion, along with other members of his family. Their homestead is far from modest. They have four large homes on a sprawling estate in Targu Giu, 350 kilometers west of Bucharest, and a very large, tight-knit family. <laughs> <laughs> but he still gets emotional, recalling his humble beginnings. Până în momentul de față, au ajuns la supra-saturație. Here, as well as in other areas, the police would force the Roma, in every possible way, to make an annual gold payment to the authorities. If our parents had a gold necklace inherited from our grandparents, the police would come, arrest them, beat them and torture them until they would give out the necklaces. Then the police would come to our house at 4 or 5 a.m. The neighborhood would then be surrounded by policemen with dogs and they'd break into our house to perform a search. In those times, we used to sleep on the floor on a blanket. Since we had no electricity and it was dark, the policemen walked over me, leaving me with some fractured bones. I was only seven at the time. They'd walk over me without even bothering to realize that there was a child they were stepping on. The conversation over dinner is, not surprisingly, about the current state of the Roma in Europe. For Ninel Portica, more compassion from Western leaders is needed. My message to Sarkozy and Berlusconi is that they're lucky to have been born in France and Italy. If they would have been born in Romania, if they would have been born with the Roma label, they would have probably done the same. We need a Europe-wide solution, because the Roma are European. The EU also believes that only a unified European policy will help address the Roma issue. They have, as a group, became main uh, victims of the post-communist transition, when uh, most of the jobs uh, were lost. It's understandable that they try to find a better uh, life, a better livelihood uh, elsewhere than in the home countries. And we have to understand this and see that not integrating the Roma costs a lot. Not integrating the Roma is a waste of human resources. Of course, we need to spend on Roma inclusion. Ionut Mihai is a neighbor of Ninel Portikas. In fact, his crumbling house is built right up against his estate wall. He has just returned from France with his two daughters after being deported. Like so many others, he earns a bit of money collecting scrap metal. Not enough to feed his family, he says. So he's returning to France, but not before being confronted by his neighbor.
Ce vrei să faci? Dacă nu avem gând, nu găsim muncă, domnule președinte. Știi bine că eu am încercat să vă ajut pe toți și am făcut tot ce mi s-a putut, tot ce am putut să fac și eu pentru voi, da. Acum mă depășește că nu avem bani, noi nu avem fonduri, fondurile europene nu s-au atras, nu se atrag din cauza birocrației din România, dar încercăm să rezolvăm problema și problema voastră, da. Nici eu nu pot să fac prea mult, încerc să fac tot ce se poate, da. Ar fi mai bine să discutăm. But there's no changing his mind. He packs his few belongings with his daughters Olga and Kalia. There is no regret, barely any goodbyes. The journey will be long. And despite the prospect of few opportunities awaiting him, he hits the road. Many have gone before him. Many more will follow.